Hey folks, welcome back to Endless Ocean Blue World. So, we've got a few things I want to do today. One, I want to poke around a little bit near the deep hole. I'm just looking for a few things. And two, well, let's go see if we can get some more side quests done. Really, all we have left at the end of the game is basically just completionism and side questery. So, well, just a matter of us hitting them. Some of you might be asking, Zorak, why even bother with all this stuff? You've beaten the game, haven't you, right? Well, yeah. It's a fun experience, though, and it's just nice to see what all they've packed into this game. They've, they put an awful lot in. Plus, it's relaxing for me, and we're probably going to be using a fair bit of editing going forward to make sure we don't bore you with a lot of meaningless repetition. Because obviously, while it may be fun for me just to relax and play the game, it might get a little boring just to have me just swim around in circles again and again and again. But while we're diving, I just want to talk about a few things. Uh, one thing I find interesting, and I find many things interesting, gonna need this picture of this uh, hump at Rass, as you may recall. It's one of the side quests. Gotta need this for the guy! The guy with the amnesia. Horrible, horrible fish amnesia. So, yes, the thing I want to talk about. So, phylogeny. You know, phylogenetics. That is the study of how we group animals, evolutionary speaking, in terms of their classification. Things like the, how we get their scientific names and how we order them, you know, their overall families. It's meant to detail and describe the development and interrelationship of a group of organisms. The whole notion of a evolutionary tree of life and, you know, that sort of thing. So, like, the funny thing is that the uh, Oxford Encyclopedia of Underwater Life I believe, has a statement in it that there is no such thing as a fish. Now, that's a pretty bold statement, but there, there's an actual good reasoning for it. So, when we handle classifications of animals, we generally do it on the basis of their interrelationships, you know. It's a way of grouping them by their evolutionary history and their cogenetics, what they're closely related to. The idea is that the taxonomic groupings of animals should, in fact, reflect their genetic phylogenetics. And fish is this massive ancient group. What does it really describe? You have things like, you know, uh, seahorses, and you have things like hagfish and lampreys. You have, you know, sharks. Are any of these things really that closely related? Well, they've got a common ancestor, yes. But their shared characteristics and their shared taxonomy really just hides that fact that they're really, really different from each other. If you look at something like the tetrapods, which is us, you know, things like fish, birds, mammals, amphibians, reptiles, the tetrapods are more closely related to things like the coelacanth and, say, lungfish, than any of these fish are to them. So it's very weird, because in terms of the actual classification, it's more a historical taxa based off of the general characteristics that we observe. They're similar, but it's not quite accurate from a total phylogenetic standpoint. So this is essentially what they're saying when they say there really is no such thing as a fish. Now this doesn't mean that they're going to get rid of fish as a concept, but it's kind of rough. It's just a taxa that doesn't really describe the overall evolutionary history of the many, many different species we contain within quote-unquote fish. It's just another example of what's so rough with taxonomy. It's such a troubled science. It's because it's so difficult to try to work this out even from a normal sense. But then you also have these conveniences that fish have many shared aspects. They all have fins. They all have gills. They all live underwater. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that they're very closely related, it just means that they have very similar traits. And that's not that they convergently developed these traits, no, they just have a common ancestor, and they've long since gotten way different from each other. I mean, it's sort of like how Dinosauria, the clade, and Aves, the clade, are technically the same damn thing. I mean, there's not that much different. We basically arbitrarily cut off anything after this point, our bird. Anything before then, eh, dinosaur. 
technically speaking, with fish, they actually had to specifically exclude tetrapods, again, us, from them. So the only reason we're not fish is that they actually wrote a little thing saying, hey, despite all these classifications for what we consider fish, it's actually just these guys, but not the tetrapods. <laughs> Which is very funny. Just think, if they, if they had different, you know, cultural backgrounds, you know, in terms of how we were forming this grouping, we would be considered fish. Which is weird. But it's true to a degree. We are more close, again, not to repeat myself, we are more closely related to lungfish than a lungfish is to, say, a salmon. And I find that cool as hell, personally. Hence why I'm able to ramble on about it for minutes on end. I suppose part of the reason why fish is what like it is beyond the whole cultural background of ah, the thing I caught it is fish is previously we did go entirely off of when we were developing these, you know, taxonomic groupings off of pure appearance. What things look similar. Well, that means that they're closely related, probably. But now we have things like molecular sequencing and genetics and we have a much better understanding thanks to our much more expansive fossil record that we've discovered over the years. So we're able to tell that, say, one fish and another fish not really that closely related genetically. And that's why fish isn't treated as a phylogenetic classification anymore. It really isn't a observed taxa. Hey, hey, who we found? Could be some other legendary sunfish. You don't know. So the game description for Apollo says that there's a Apollo legend that the sun rests in the sea during the night and rises up from the water in the morning. And the sun is said to turn into a large round fish while under the sea, which is none other than this specific sunfish. Apparently, he's sometimes seen leaping into the sky. An interesting fact about sunfish is that in English it is, yes, called the sunfish. But in Spanish, Italian, and German, it's called the moonfish. Everybody's really stuck on referring to them by celestial objects. Which is, you know, fair enough. They're the pretty round fish. So many sunfish facts revolve around their shape. I hope I'm not the only one that's noticed that over the last two games. Alright, let's return to the boat. Now, next side quest I would like to work on, not that though we, were, we just were, is... well... Let's just say it's one of those incidental side quests that just appear. So let's just go travel over to the Red Sea. Maybe something will happen. We shall see. I'm sorry. That that wasn't intentional. It 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 just kind of happened. Whale crisis strikes. Okay. Huh. <laughs> Y'all want in? Have you not heard the parable of the starfish? 
Does that exist in French? Starfish Oceana. Starfish. Starfish. Also, they're, they're sentient, so, you know. I mean, when we are figuratively beached in the water, you know, shipwreck, they, they help out, so, yeah. Don't even make me think about sentient starfish. That would be horrifying and tragic. Unless they're a jerk. In which case, fuck them. Yes, you in fact have the option just to put it off to later. Just assume that pod's like a million miles away. We spotted them off the coast of New Zealand. They'll be here any month. to about eh, something around the nate range of like 2,000 animals per year. And uh, though basically every whale that beaches themselves uh, typically results in death, it doesn't result in a major effect to any one group because it's pretty spread out between the different species. I mean, there's only 10 species that commonly have mass beaching or beach rather frequently. But the overall number of whales at beach isn't significant. The whales that typically beach themselves are toothed whales rather than baleen whales, uh, much like these sperm whales here. It does seem to happen most commonly with deep water whales and communal whales, much like, again, these sperm whales. Though it does also happen to things like pilot whales and uh, some beaked whale species. Many beachings actually occur posthumously, so where it's basically just they died at sea and just washed up on shore, and it's it's kind of hard to tell. Obviously, when most whales die, they just create a whale fall on the ocean floor, and, but that's not always the case. So getting the exact numbers down is a little tricky. It's not quite sure why it happens. Uh, sometimes it's just that a single whale beaches itself, and then the entire pod responds to its distress signals and basically accidentally strand themselves alongside it. It may also just be that the whales get too close to shore going after prey and get stuck in a sort of tidal pattern where they have an issue escaping. It's, it's hard to tell what exactly is going on. It may have something to do with uh, the coastlines themselves when they're particularly gently sloping. There's certain areas that are particularly mass beaching prone. And they do often have these characteristics. So, and obviously, ill whales are more prone already, but on their own illness, to beach themselves. And that can result in mass beachings as family goes along with it, essentially. You do see cases that are, in fact, caused by man influence, you know, in the sense of that uh, things like sonar can confuse whales or even damage their eardrums, though it's pretty rare as far as we can tell, and certainly not at the level and scale that is often freaked out about by some people. There's more than a few conspiracy theories that essentially come down to the idea that the Navy is de deliberately killing whales for whatever unknown reason. I don't know. A lot of people like to kind of combine this thing with the whole idea of merpeople, and that this is a giant merpeople conspiracy. 
the Navy is hiding mer people. Which is weird. I mean, if we knew that there was mer people, why would we want to hide them? That'd be pretty cool. It's often very difficult to get rid of whale carcasses when they do beach themselves. There's that great story of a... Uh, what was that? It was... Nineteen seventy, I think they found like a whale carcass in Oregon, I think. Sorry. They had a whale carcass in Oregon and they tried getting rid of it by blowing it up with dynamite. Because, you know, that's that's how you would, you know, deal with like say a boulder that got stuck in the way. Make it small enough pieces the whale, and scavengers would be able to eat it. So they it's like a half a ton of dynamite on it and well it didn't end very well. Welcome to moral relativism. And whales! You, viewer, in the audience, watching this LP of a video game. And that's the end of the Oceana wanting to go help fish. Sick like fish, side quest. We helped. Go team. Yeah, uh, sure. How sick were they? Can I see diagrams? Yes? Uh-huh. 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 And there's like 49 that you didn't have to even fucking bother. Way to go! Alright, let's call Nancy. Let's have her look at our shit. Capsule toy. Well, there you go. We're slowly getting there. We're nearly halfway to 100k, which is one tenth of the way to our final goal. Yeah, I need to change hairstyle. This hairstyle is terrible. We have endured it long enough. Just like in one of my Japanese mecha animes. Alright. Let's look at these items that we just bought again. They often have funny descriptions, and those are great. <laughs> yeah, either way, that, that sounds pretty amazing. There's a lot of weird Japanese capsule toys. 
That's just like I'm just making like, just general observation. Slightly different tint from the other one. All right. We don't have any one of these one stories that we have somehow not managed to not finish a single story. That is infuriating. Because once you complete a story via coins, you get something. Yes, yes. All right. Let's do some shows. This is probably the last bit of shows I'm going to be showing. So let's go out with a little bit of a bang. Give me the bragging rights. Self-aware comments on the nature of this quest line. We have never heard of the Narval. The unicorn of the sea. No, never. Well, that's awfully leading. Thanks. Well, thank you for the hint, I guess. Maybe we'll do that next time. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Yeah, probably. 